Hello, everyone. How are you? Hope you are having a great time. As you see, this simple natural language statement, how are you, helped me to break the ice and have this conversation going with you all today. It is the same simple natural language is the one that is enabling us to navigate all the complexity around us in our day-to-day -day lives. It is this simple yet profound language is the one that is playing a key role in transforming our thoughts into actions, right? So this got me thinking on how are we interacting with the machines and how that's changing. We all know we started with punch cards to interact with the machines, and we upgraded this with assembly language, right, so that we reduce the time taken in preparing the punch cards. We then moved on to higher level programming languages like C, C++, Java, where for the first time, we started to see the natural language keywords appearing in our programming languages, right? Most of you are aware all the familiar words like if, for, while, try, catch, finally, all of those we started to see in our languages. Command line interfaces became graphical user interfaces, then got enriched by touch interfaces. But today, in 2023, we're at a transformative moment when it comes to this human-computer interaction, where natural language is becoming the new interface, and where every keyboard is now a new magic wand. Generative AI is leading us into this transformation, and it goes beyond an interface change. With generative AI, today we have seen creation of new content, whether it's text, poems, or images, audio, video, we're able to create new code to interact with the machines. And we're able to orchestrate complex tasks using generative AI. Before we go too deep into this, let's take a minute and discuss what is generative AI. And let, let's look at this from the model standpoint of view. As you see on the screen, on the left-hand side, you have the traditional machine learning where we needed to develop the models with a lot of curated data, with a lot of labeling data, all that to produce a machine learning model that is good at a specific task. Whereas the foundational models are prepared based on large corpus of data that is unlabeled, and they required only small amounts of fine-tuning labeled data so that they can perform various tasks efficiently and accurately. In the past, I need to know ahead of time on what model to use for my objective. And if the objective is complex, then I need to know how to stitch together multiple machine learning models. But now, with the foundational models, Foundational models are capable of preparing the plan and then executing all the required tasks all by itself. And it is this power of foundational models is what is making us see all the magical experiences that we have been seeing today. I know you're all here because you wanted to enhance or elevate or even reimagine your customer experiences. Let us explore and then see how AWS and Amazon Bedrock brings all the capabilities that you need for your generative AI journey. At high level, I look at this as having to have these four essentials for building an effective generative AI application. The first one, you need the purpose-built infrastructure. Number two, having access to a variety of models, and then making these generic models work better for you and with your data. And the fourth and the important one is to having access to the ease of use tools 
so that you can take these, bring these experiences to life faster and easier. Let's look at each one of these, starting with purpose-built ML infrastructure. AWS was the first one to bring NVIDIA's M200 chips back in 2010 onto the cloud. And then we were the first ones to bring NVIDIA A100s onto the cloud in 2020. And again, this year, we were the major cloud provider for bringing NVIDIA's H100s onto the cloud. In addition to our work with NVIDIA, we have been innovating all the way to the silicon level and brought AWS Trainium and Inferentia for your generative AI workloads. And this year again, we launched Inferentia 2 that is offering four times the higher throughput and up to 10 times the lower latency compared to the previous generation Info 1. Now let's move on to the second essential, which is having access to the variety of foundational models. We are still in the initial stages of generative AI, and this space is moving rapid fast. Because of that, we believe no one model is going to rule the world. Hence, on Bedrock, we bring variety of foundational models from the leading providers like AI21 Labs, Anthropic, Cohere, Meta, and Stability, along with Titan that is built by Amazon. Not only the breadth, we're expanding the depth and bringing the latest models from these providers at a rapid pace. Just two weeks ago, we added support for Cloud 2.1 on Bedrock. Cloud 2.1 supports 200K context window and as per Anthropic, it has 50% less hallucinations. 2.1 also has the support for system prompts while reducing the cost for prompt completion by 25%. We also added the largest model from Llama 70B two weeks ago. In addition to our work on other providers, we also brought app. Amazon Titan Text Lite and Text Express in GA, so that you have the choice to pick the right model for your needs. So that was the work on the text. And just two weeks ago, we launched image generator support for Titan, and it is available in preview. Amazon Titan image generator has multiple capabilities, starting from having invisible watermarks so that you have the ability to distinguish AI-generated work from other forms. As you see, a simple prompt like this, show me an image of iguana. You have a high-quality image generated by image gen Titan image generator. You don't like the backdrop? Change the prompt, and a new image is generated with the new backdrop. Titan Image Generator also has the ability to pick one of the models, one of the, sorry, one of the images as a reference image, and then make modifications to that, like changing the orientation. Right, there are so many other features on Image Generator that we go on. And then the next topic that I want to introduce is about embeddings. We have seen large foundational models good at generating the new content, right, text and image. What about using foundational models for purposes other than content generation? And that's where vector embeddings comes into picture. Embeddings are about getting the numerical representation of textual data. We as humans, if we are, if we are given the words like cat, kitten, or even a sound like meow, we understand all those words for, or belong to each other. And vector embeddings gives that ability for your applications to recognize 
the words that are re related. And how does this help? Sorry, before going there, to help applications like these, personalization, search, and recommendation, we launched Amazon Titan text embeddings. And this model can improve search experiences like this. On the left-hand side, we see a search bringing all the products that is simply having the golf shoes in it, and then a search application that is powered by vector embeddings is able to make use of the rich information in the prompt or in the query and able to bring the right products to your customers. But real-world applications are even more complex. What if a furniture company wants to light up a scenario like this, where you want to have the search done by both text and an image? Today, developers need to stitch multiple models to get to this outcome, right? And it's not only time-consuming, but is also inefficient. And to handle this, we launched Amazon Titan multi-modal embeddings so that you get the unified embeddings, both for the text and then the image. And to recap, here is the family of foundational models from Titan, and then the breadth of the coverage of foundational models we provide on Amazon Bedrock. With that, we have more than 10,000 customers that are rapidly innovating with Amazon Bedrock today. And now, let's move on to the next essential element of building generative AI applications. This is about taking the generic model and making it better for you and with your data and with your intelligence. For this, Amazon Bedrock has the fine-tuning capability where you bring small sets of labeled data so that you can make the generic model work better for you and for your task. And not only that, if you want to take the generic model and introduce a new domain to the model, you can do that with the pre-training API. Today, fine-tuning is available on the models from these providers, and we are adding this support to Anthropic as well soon. Now, going on to the next essential, which is super important to bring the applications to life faster, is about having these easy-to-use tools. And the first one I would like to introduce here is the model evaluator for Amazon Bedrock. So far, we have seen that Bedrock has given you the access to the variety of foundational models, and you also know how to adapt them with your data. But customers are still asking on how do I get started? How do I know the right model for my business use case and for my organization? A lot of times, the answer lies in getting these key metrics about quality of the model for your data, for your use cases, and latency, and the cost, and the trade-offs that you need to make among these three parameters. And Amazon Model Evaluator makes it easy and transparent for you to get these metrics. Let's take a look at this feature with this quick three-minute video. The first two criteria, latency and cost, you can review quickly in the Amazon Bedrock Playground. If you, for example, provide a prompt to ask the model to generate a text or to summarize a text, you can quickly review both the time it takes the model to return a result, as well as review the associated cost. You can quickly set metrics for the different values to evaluate the latency, input and output token count, as well as cost. If you select model evaluation in the Amazon Bedrock console, you're also provided with a way to evaluate the quality aspect. This can be done through automation or using a team of humans. You can bring your own team with your subject matter experts, and we provide mechanisms for you to do that. Or you can hire an AWS managed team, and we can work with you directly to understand the requirements for the evaluation, and we can then source the team for you while keeping you in the loop. 
I'm going to focus on the automated testing in this brief demonstration. I'll give my evaluation a name and a brief description. You then choose the model you want to work with from the bedrock models that you have access to. In this case, I'm going to select the Amazon Titan Text G1 Lite. We have four task types that we can evaluate. Text summarization, text classification, question and answer, and general text generation. I will select to test this model for the text summarization task type. For each of these task types, we have provided metrics for accuracy, toxicity, and robustness. For each of these, we have curated data sets that you can pick from, or you can bring your own data sets for each of these metrics. You could bring your own prompt data set as well, but for this demo, I'll stick with the ones that we provide. I'm going to use the GigaWord and XSum data sets when evaluating the different metrics. I'll specify an S3 bucket where I want to store the results of the model evaluation. And I have to create or choose an IAM role that has access to the S3 buckets that I will use, as well as permission to use any models selected for this evaluation. Then I just select Create. We can see that my evaluation is still processing. So I'll show you the results of an identical test that is already completed. When I select the evaluation, I'm presented with a model evaluation report. In this report, I can see that for accuracy, toxicity, and robustness, I have a value representing the performance for each data set. A low value for toxicity here indicates that the model is not producing a lot of toxic content. Our documentation describes which algorithms are used for each task type and whether a high or low score is better for each. I can also validate that all the prompts that were used were successfully processed in the test. You can go to the S3 bucket to review the output data. For each data set, we have generated results. Here, you can review the raw results, the algorithm, and the value calculation, all in the provided JSON line output file. Hope you like the tool. Before to this tool, this was almost like a million dollar question, or maybe a one crore question on, hey, what model should I use? And not only the automated evaluation, this tool also helps you to bring your subject matter experts so that they can evaluate what is the right model for the use case at hand. So previously, we discussed about the fine tuning to adapt the large language model for your organizational task. Right? But is the fine tuning the only approach to adapt these large language models? There is a technique called RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, that helps you to bring up-to-date information of your, your organization and make the LLM respond based on the up-to-date data. How many of you heard the RAG or know the RAG? OK, quite few people here. So it, this is somewhat repeat for you but let me try to make it fast. The way RAG works is you take the input data that you have and that you want the LLMs to operate on, you break them into smaller chunks, and against each chunk, you need to create the vector embeddings using one of the models that I discussed before, like Amazon Titan embeddings. Now you got these embeddings and need integration with the vector databases to store the embeddings, and then during runtime, when a query comes like, hey, what is your cancellation policy? Then you need to generate the embeddings corresponding to this input query, and then do a match with the embeddings in your storage and get the corresponding documents for it, and then take those documents, augment the prompt, and ask LLM to generate the response based on the information that you have provided. As you have seen, this is definitely tedious and time consuming. Moreover, it's undifferentiated work. And to eliminate this, we launched Knowledge Bases for Amazon Bedrock, where you simply point your information in an S3 bucket, and then Knowledge Bases for Amazon Bedrock will be able to start answering the questions and also while retaining the context. Once again, let's take a quick look at how this feature works with this video. I've created a PDF document with questions and answers for a fictional hotel chain. 
I've uploaded this PDF to an S3 bucket, and this will be used by our Bedrock knowledge base to answer our questions. You can see that I have some information about the pool hours for a few different hotels. I also have a lot of other common questions, as well as a short description of each resort, including some points of interest for each. We can easily add this new conversational FAQ intent to an existing bot by choosing Add Intent. Under Built-in Intents, you can now see that we have the new Q&A intent available for you. When you're configuring this intent, you can choose different models. In this case, I've chosen Anthropics Claude V2. We also have several options for knowledge stores. You can choose to use OpenSearch, Amazon Kendra, or in this case, I'm choosing to use the Bedrock Knowledge Base. Once I've chosen Bedrock Knowledge Base, all I have to do is to paste in my Bedrock Knowledge Base ID, save, build, and then I can test my bot. We can now ask questions related to the document that we've uploaded. I'll start by asking a question about the pool hours in Las Vegas. The intent now calls the Amazon Bedrock Knowledge Base to answer this question for us. I can then ask a follow-up question. Even though I don't mention pool hours or refer to a hotel, the bot understands that based on the context, we're referring back to our previous question here. If I ask about things to do around the New York resort, the model can figure out that we're interested in the points of interest close to the hotel that were mentioned in our document. I can even ask it to recommend a hotel that is good for a family vacation, and the bot will be able to find the relevant passages in the document referring to the kids' programs, poolside movies, and proximity to amusement parks, and recommend the Orlando Resort to me. As you have seen, starting from a simple file to chatbot in a matter of minutes, you can now accomplish that using knowledge bases for Amazon Bedrock. But the real-world applications demand even more, right? Not only being able to operate on your latest information, the real-world applications also need to perform some tasks. Like, for example, if my query is like, hey, if there are no heavy rains this weekend, I want to go to my hometown, book me a ticket to Chennai, for example. And not only that, I might say, hey, I want to book this ticket only if, the, if you allow cancellations. Right? This is very simple for us. And today, with agents for Bedrock, you'll be able to orchestrate these complex queries. And the way agents for Bedrock works is you can select the large language model for the agent, and you provide basic instructions on how the bot should work and give the persona to the bot, and then simply specify your APIs to the agent like booking a ticket, canceling a ticket, or get weather as APIs, introduce your APIs to the agent. Along with that, also provide your information, static information, or via bedrock knowledge bases to it. So now the agent has all the information about your organization on how to fetch the information and also how to perform the operations. Now let us take a quick look at agents in action from Credit B. Credit B is a local customer who facilitates loan transactions between borrowers and personal loan providers. Today, Credit B is receiving thousands of emails inquiring about their products. And let's take a look at how Credit B used Amazon Agents for Bedrock to bring automation to their operations. In this demo, we will be covering three use cases. First, classifying predefined categories from email subjects or content. Second, draft and translate the email response in English, Indian languages and also Indian language written in English words. Finally, calling external APIs for user validation using Amazon Bedrock Agents. Let's see the first use case. This is the sample ticket request payload from Credit B Ticketing System, where the customer is using English vocabulary for Hindi to create a ticket while the solution runs in the background. Let's take a brief look at the architecture of this solution. As the user initiates a request via email, Ticketing System Connector pushes the events to Amazon EventBridge, which in turn calls a Lambda function to pre-process and get the required information. This message is then put in a SQS queue. Step function workflow is called, 
where the bedrock Claude 2 model is called first to categorize the message. In the second step, Claude model is called to extract the entities from the message. In the next step, bedrock agents are used to validate and retrieve information from Credit B API. Finally, Claude model uses this information to generate the email in the identified language from the message. Coming back to the demo, we can see that the solution was able to identify and understand the user query. It generated the email response based on identified category. Customer asked a question in Hindi written using English words, which the solution identified and respond back in Hindi. For the second use case, let's try the same scenario using native Hindi. Solution was able to generate the email response. In the third use case, customer is asking question in English which is grammatically not correct but the solution is able to understand the intent and respond back with the category and email message. In the final use case, customer is asking question in English, and the system responds back with category and email message. In this demo, we showcased how Bedrock model can extract entities, interact with APIs using agents, and also identify the language to respond. Isn't that amazing? Like, agents is able to respond both in English or Hindi, based on the customer's uh, voice. And by the way, the voiceover for that video was also AI-generated. As we covered, Amazon Bedrock and AWS brings all the four essentials that you need for building generative AI applications. And building on top of the same essentials, we also built generative AI applications so that you can experience the power of Gen AI without writing any code like Amazon Code Whisperer and Q family of products are built on top of the same essentials. Amazon Q, as you have seen in one of the promo videos, is a, your AWS expert for your business. Amazon Q is also available in QuickSight to query data using natural language. Amazon Q is also available in Connect so that call center also gets the support that they need. Amazon Q is also available in IDE so that you can ask questions against the code. We can also take a quick look at how Amazon Q works. As I've covered those four essentials, with that, Amazon Bedrock and AWS has everything that you need for your generative AI journey. I look forward to seeing what you create next with AWS. Thank you all.